can say definitively that religions are all bullshit. Welcome to Brainstorm. We have the explicit tag for a reason. This is a base level argument to a higher level morality. I get paid to science? To science as much as one can science. What the hell was my point? Trigger warning. The Brainstorm podcast will criticize your most cherished beliefs. We attack nonsense in all its forms and discuss difficult subjects. Dogma, then this is not your safe place. This is the home of hardcore skepticism. Quit fucking with your mic. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck with you. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> Skeptic <laughs> Studio, where we do interviews, yes. major topics, and news related to skepticism and atheism. We broadcast live every second Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Not Central Daylight. Ish. Ish. <laughs> yeah, we're a little late today. On Spreaker.com, I'm Corey, and my panel tonight are Angela. Hello. Lisa. I like how fuck was the second word of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Renee. Hello. Destin. Hey. And the always amazing Dave doing sound. Amazing. <laughs> We're here in Roman Empire Studios in Regina, Saskatchewan, and today is March 31st, 2017. This week we've got an interview with one of the superstar duos of skepticism, Natalie and Dan from the Science Enthusiasts <laughs> podcast. Thanks for joining us, guys. That's just I like way that. too much. Fr- I do not. That's, just, that's, that's expectations. And well, we'll... I'm- we'll- crumble everybody's expectations in a second <laughs> it's, it's, clearly yeah. it's okay so, we have 20 listeners so I love how we're, we're on fine. your on your podcast website you apologize you pre-apologize it's because we we're sorry we are we sorry for are all about low expectations <laughs> we, we want everybody to come in like eh, this is probably gonna suck and then maybe if it doesn't they're like oh wow maybe we'll yeah we can we can meet low expectations and maybe even exceed them <laughs> maybe even keep well, them well, low you, people you never just Disappointed, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. We don't disappoint people because they come in expecting that it might be terrible. So, you know, we just apologize right off the bat. Perfect. <laughs> that's a good way that to do cool. it. That's a great way to be. It's a great Here way. Here we are be. building expectations and then falling short all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we're doing we're, it wrong, clearly. we're Canadian, so it's assumed that we're apologizing all the time. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Oh, so we take a Canadian approach to our podcast. There you go. There you go. Very, we're very like, Canadian. Fat. Yeah. We also Barry. produce second-rate quality stuff. So we made it up to second-rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do we? Do we have to say sorry? <laughs> uh, like in that way. If sorry, we're eh? show. Canadians sorry. don't say sorry like sarcastically or anything like that. No, we're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, like that. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I've, I've watched Trailer Park Boy. <laughs> I know how it works? Because that is how every Canadian is. It actually isn't that far. Like, come on, let's be honest. <laughs> no, it. I, like, not that I have firsthand experience, but it's. What is Corey the, drinking? <laughs> The, the the trailer park <laughs> setting of that is not untrue. I don't know about the Canadian part. It's, it's yeah. highly Canadian. It's we, we could have lots of trailer park here because we don't have as many tornadoes. <laughs> um, yes. Good point. Our I like that. It's like for tornadoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we, we could have multi-level trailers mm. if we wanted to. <laughs> Stack trailers them. scrapers yeah. <laughs> they just get buried in snow they don't have to worry about the tornado <laughs> all right so now that we're off track oh, yeah. <laughs> if, you're, off. if you don't start on track you don't get off that's track. true that's fair low expectations, uh, my, my. Thank you. <laughs> expectations. <laughs> there's the new name of the episode <laughs> this is gonna be a good show I can oh feel yeah it. all right uh that's high ex- expectations What's high? Oh, yeah. She said it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess you guys, uh, well, your show is pretty new. So I wonder what caused you to uh, kick a, kick it off. What started it? Um, well, we we kind of became online friends through doing like I I started running my Science Moms Facebook page for my documentary you can, you can tell dance. Them Craigslist. Okay, sorry. We we really met on Craigslist, like the deep, <laughs> deep, dark places of the internet. We we met, 
and um, then decided to do a podcast, obviously. But, um, yeah, so Craigslist uh, aside, um, we just, I mean, it's not even that interesting, really. We just kind of started having conversations about things related to, like, science communication and skepticism and atheism and all that. And we're just kind of like, oh, maybe people would want to hear us talk about some of this stuff. And um, then we we got drunk a couple times, made the first two episodes, and... um, then That's a good way decided, to do it. <laughs> I mean, we 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 had a little liquid courage for the first couple you, episodes, yeah, people, especially people didn't not listen to us, right? So, like, <laughs> so we're like, okay, um, let's just keep doing it, and we're forty four episodes down nice. now. Good. So yeah. That's awesome. Respectable. Yeah, like so, we've been putting out a show every week for for months now, and enjoying it and talking to interesting people. And, and I think really it's like a cool opportunity. I mean, I'm sure you guys can relate to just wanting to talk to people that, you know, (laughs) you can joke around with, share some like common interests and worldviews and, Mm -hmm. and get to just meet interesting people. So podcasts are a great excuse to just do that. So (laughs) we're going to keep doing that while, you know, it's just fun. Do you have anything to add, buddy? No. <laughs> well, that's a really cool way to meet somebody to do a podcast with. I, as soon as you said that, I realized that's that's what I'm missing. I, so I think not not that my not, not that these people aren't interested. Find somebody on Virage sale. No, I'm like thinking that. 4chan. 4chan. Oh my lord! This I was saying this took a, <laughs> a dark turn. I'm both, Very I'm, dark. I'm both scared and aroused. <laughs> So you too have been on 4chan. <laughs> hmm. I again, I'm not confirming. Where you're <laughs> yeah. He Fair keeps enough. an air of mystery around him, yeah. but he knows every corner of the internet ever. So. Every, corner. every single one. <laughs> I actually finished the internet the other day. Are there things you can't unsee? I mean. <laughs> Dead silence. <laughs> yeah. That's a, fla- that's a flashback right that there. That's speaks volumes. That yeah. speaks volumes. Okay. Si- silence is noise too. So. <laughs> how, so, how existential. Are you guys? Uh, do you have science backgrounds? Uh, or are you just like us, just a bunch of, well, except for Lisa, she's educated. I was but. like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> or are you just like most of us where we just have an interest in it? And I have a social science background. Oh, true. Fair. Yes, that counts. So I have to say I have a, I have a bachelor count. of no. science in education, but that's, <laughs> that's about it. But so no, my, uh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Natalie. My, my background is um, like I did undergrad in psychology and um, human development, and then I did graduate school for uh, I had my master's in education, and I concentrated on um, Montessori education. So yeah, but not um, you know. So psychology is kind of as as close as I would get. But that's what science. It's a science, it and is. and actually psychology is like one of the classes I took. Um, an irrational behavior class was kind of intro to skepticism. Basically nice. I took a junior year of college and that's what, you know, got me interested in all of these topics. So, but yeah, I don't, I've never worked in sort of a sciencey field or anything, but the interest was just there. It, like are you guys, it's like kind of like the same thing, just interest in. Mostly. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm a, uh, he puts water in a hole. <laughs> I'm a blue collar grunt. <laughs> he sells cars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a scientist. Like yeah, half my, it's so weird to me because like half my Facebook is all scientists, and they're all just the same as all the other fuckers out there like, <laughs> whining about their bullshit. And you know, like it's she, all. Lisa same. was bragging the other day when she was putting up her eighth degree on the wall. <laughs> it was my fifth. It was my fifth. Okay, and I, what I was bragging about is actually able to like get the cash nice. together to afford this stupid frame, which yeah. I didn't even do. Like I got it for my birthday. <laughs> yeah. like, Meanwhile, he's degrees. so uneducated he can't count. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Piece of paper, $25,000 this one. Frame, four bucks. Frames are like 300 bucks. They're so effing expensive. You went to university anyways. Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair so enough. I guess, Natalie, you uh, did a documentary called Science Moms. Uh, I guess, can you tell us a bit about that? 
Yeah. So, um, so the movie, it is a like 30 minute short documentary that is nearly done. It's kind of in the final like post-production stages. Okay. Everything is filmed. It's kind of mostly edited together and still waiting some like animation type of stuff. But, um, the movie, it, kind of tackles some parenting related issues mostly around food namely like myths about organic food gmos that kind of stuff um food and then some medical type of things like you know homeopathy is bullshit <laughs> um like vaccinate your children things that to us are maybe um common sense yeah. but to you know like a lot i mean a big part of the general public is kind of unsure or um, Mm -hmm. fed misinformation or scared about these kind of topics. So um, I was inspired by uh, a blog post, this sort of open letter on the Grounded Parents blog, Um, like some scientist and um, science advocate moms wrote this open letter to like celebrity moms, like, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow and (laughs) Sarah Michelle Gellar and all those people that were like, just label it GMOs. They're awful poison things. Um, This other, you know, group of rational, science-minded women wrote this great post pretty much saying, like, don't say bullshit in the name of motherhood. They said it more eloquently than I just did. (laughs) Um, But I thought, like, this could be a a cool thing to make a documentary about when there's so much bullshit out there Mm -hmm. for, um, you know, like, movies like GMO, OMG, and consumed and vaxxed and all these, you know like misinformation fear filled films. So I thought maybe like make something that could serve as a little bit of an antidote to that. And yeah, contacted five of these women and they're the interview subjects of the film and they're awesome. And hopefully it's a movie that, you know, parents or prospective parents or even just people interested in some of these issues can see and get a different perspective than like, what you know the non-gmo project and like andrew wakefield put out into the world about their particular topics <laughs> yeah. so you know something a little different and and it's, it's an original kind of a perspective too because not a lot of people like yeah parenting parenting is all over social media but there's there's a lot of of woo surrounding parenting mm-hmm. and there's not a lot of actual skeptic parents out there that are like no you guys <laughs> let's let's be rational about these things. So, I'm excited to see it when it's finished. Have you seen the uh, skeptic OB uh, blog? Yes, that's and a good one. A friend of the show. Yeah, we is had she? her on our show. I yeah. love her. I want her on this yeah. show. She's booked. Is she? <gasps> oh my god! I was going to say, ask her. Yeah. Oh my god. I love she's her awesome. so much. She's like, she's a badass. Like, I know. I love, I read, that's pretty much all I read when I was pregnant. I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm so sick of all this bullshit, natural birth, water birth, like fucking eating your placenta. Like, fuck off. Like, <laughs> so, no, go to hell. Oh, I totally almost. You don't want to make lasagna? You almost ate your placenta? You have the main little pills? No. Almost. Oh my I God. I didn't did say that. pills. That, pills aren't natural. Lasagna is natural. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh yes, it no. Is. You can actually have your placenta sent off to cre- get created into pills. Yeah, you, you get it. Yeah, you get it dry. Uh, whatever. Uh, it's yeah. late. Jesus. Well, yeah. Yep. Like I. Well, when I when I had my kids at the hospital, like both times, like the nurse had to ask me. She's like, "So, do you want to save your placenta?" <laughs> And I'm just like, the look I gave her, like, obviously I didn't have to say words because she knew that the answer was no, but you it's like, horrified. I don't, I don't want to eat that. I don't know. No. Well, I can see it being used as fertilizer. Like you put, you put it in your compost heap, it might give, I don't know, that might help. Lots of yeah. protein and iron, right? Yeah, you'd think it would do something there. I could compost yeah. my placenta. I'd be able to help the tomatoes grow. Oh man, you, you can make like really wicked natural like supplements out of placentas and get like ridiculously rich. Yeah. Oh, it's you know totally. there's somebody now, like out there. You don't there even need to. You can just yeah, use something right, else yeah. and call it placenta. Well, no, you, you only need like one microgram of placenta for like great. You just five hundred. Gwyneth right. Paltrow her next. It's homeopathic. Idea. Yeah, so <laughs> homeopathic. Eight hundred liters just of water. Say homeopathic placenta. Like <laughs> one <laughs> one yes. pinch of yeah. Paltrow placenta, and you yeah. will yeah. fly. I don't know what the fuck. It's a million dollar idea. It is. You heard it here first, folks. 
good one. <laughs> She'll sell it next to her like vaginal jade eggs on her. Oh yeah, 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 we saw that. Like yeah. you know, eat some placenta and stick a jade egg up uh, your vagina. Yeah. See, when I saw that, <laughs> I, I was wondering why she didn't combine ideas together. Why can't you have a a jade egg vaginal steamer? <laughs> See, I would say it couldn't hurt, but it really could. It might actually jade hurt. Egg. Like plus like crystal placenta egg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, Him, Himal- Himal- yeah, pink Himalayan rock it, salt. Magical <laughs> steamer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Himalayan rock salt. Yeah. Get all your woo in one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. oh geez. That's too much. Organic woo. Himalayan rock salt. <laughs> yeah, all organic. <laughs> Oh God! It's pure. It's chemical so free, pure. probably. Chem- yes. Yeah, totally chemical like, free. <laughs> yep. It's fantastic. It's great. Blessed Ugh. by a Buddhist monk. Best salt. <laughs> Greatest. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, <laughs> this is our show. <laughs> How long have you been running your Facebook page? It's getting quite huge at this point. That's what she said. Uh, about <laughs> two and a half years or so, I think. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, has it, I guess, something that I've always been curious about is how a page like that grows so large. Is it just memes and cats that memes. draw people? <laughs> memes. Memes. I've memes, created, memes. I've created a, a multi layer, multifaceted plan across like eight <laughs> different pages that I use to. Uh, circle jerk myself. Circle jerk, yep. <laughs> also, uh, right, so you share from one page to the next to the next. And Masturbatory meme bit. sharing? Is that what that is? Just a little bit. But I, I would <laughs> like to think that I'm sharing like good, rational ideas yeah. and uh, with, a, with a sense of humor and satire and things like that uh, from time to time. Uh, but mostly, uh, I mean, mostly dick jokes. I think people like so, dick jokes. Dick jokes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you don't like dick jokes, you're a terrorist. <laughs> that's right. So, that's right. I prefer I vagina that's really, jokes. I, I believe I did see that tip. as a bumper sticker. That makes you a I terrorist. Don't, I don't know that that's terrorista? untrue. I feel like that's very evidence based. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think terrorists like dick jokes. I bet they don't. You can't prove they don't. <laughs> no, they take the dick see, very well, no, seriously. No, no, God. no. They take the dick very seriously. See. You're just talking about terrorists that maybe might not be English. I didn't because I know I know, <laughs> I, I'm You're pretty sure that, that some some North American terrorists probably love dick jokes. No way, man! They're way, they're way too serious to do dick jokes. If you're a terrorist, you got to be serious. You got to have no sense of humor at all, right? You got to be. Like, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty me, sure Timi- Timothy McVeigh didn't like dick jokes. No, he's until too- he went to jail. Then. Different story. <laughs> he wasn't a terrorist. He was white, so he was just an extremist. That's true. Like a crazy, he was a, a he crazy was person. He was, crazy uh, person. <laughs> he was mentally disturbed. He wasn't a terrorist. Come on. So he liked dick jokes. Always. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. I don't. Yes. Again, I fact. can't prove that he didn't. Fact. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, fact. fact. Alternative Maybe. fact. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. No, know? not anymore, does it? No. no. It, do- it doesn't uh, matter. <laughs> Timothy, I know him. He's a good guy. Like dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> told him a dick joke, funniest joke he ever heard. It's great. Fantastic. Yeah. I don't want to reference that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Your jokes on. are rigged, Gumby. <laughs> He's actually he's actually not too far. Like right now, he's uh, just uh, about an hour away from where I live. Is so. that right? Donald yeah, Trump or Timothy McVeigh? McVeigh, I don't know where Trump is. Uh, he's in that's Mar-a-Lago. scarier. He's probably no, in, McVeigh. He's in Florida. Is he at the, is he at the Winter White House? Is yeah, he's probably at Mar-a-Lago where or wherever the fuck. Yeah. Not not knowing where Trump is is scarier than knowing that Timothy McVeigh is only an hour <laughs> no, away from you. McVeigh's yes. not moving around. No. Yeah. No. I mean, not, well, not I should golfing say, that I, I, know. Where, I know where he was. Is McVeigh was killed, or he wasn't killed by the government because we don't kill people. We. We, uh, uh, yes. Capital punishment is not murder for some reason because because reasons. Yeah. Uh, oh, is he dead? Yeah, they, ex- yeah. I think they executed yeah. him. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's been dead for about like sixteen years. Sixteen, okay. I, so, I'm sorry. I mean, give people. or take. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know the exact date, but whatever. That, like, we don't like, do that yeah. up here, so we. The, the subject <laughs> of capital punishment being like a terrible idea is the topic of another podcast. I think. Yeah. Yes. No, no, yeah. we just take people who don't like and drop them outside of the city in the winter. <laughs> 
<laughs> just like fend for yourselves. That's it. <laughs> that yeah. actually was a scandal that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, was that really a thing that happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really did. But that wasn't like a that wasn't a state was, sanctioned thing. That no, was God, no. that was like something some fucker should never have done. And blah, blah. you know, it's not like the government's like, yes, this is what we do. This is what's on our books. Like this is our official like, policy. Yeah, no, we don't do that. But it was something that happened <laughs> and that was bad. We, we came close into the last federal election. <laughs> Kind of like, kind of like treating meningitis with maple syrup and garlic. Exactly. Yeah, we, yeah, we've had people that, that, get charged with that here. Yeah, yeah uh, that doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it doesn't. Oh, no, you need to use echinacea. Newsflash: oh. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what what turned the Facebook page into a group, which is uh, by by many standards the group? <laughs> I. Whose standard is that? <laughs> the internet has low standards, Dan. Just like just go with it. I, I have, I mean, I guess I have no standards. Uh, I originally made it just to be a place for uh, people who either were like super fans of the page or uh, like friends and, and stuff like that to hang out in and, and talk about it. Then like it kind of grew. Then like like people started adding people and then. All of a sudden, it turned into like a hundred people to like a thousand. Then I was like, "Fuck it, we'll just uh, <laughs> let anybody who wants in can can join." And then now it's this thing that I don't even know like <laughs> what it is. It's just so. It's, what is your Facebook page for our listeners? So well, we'll my my right page now. is a science enthusiast, or my main page is a science enthusiast. But the the group uh, that we run uh, is uh, the science enthusiasts. Uh, that uh, I'll, I'll admit, I, I don't do hardly anything in there uh, at all. One could say I don't do anything at all, and that would be uh, extremely evidence based. But uh, I mean, that, that group, the the page itself is like seven hundred something thousand, but the group has I think thirty seven thousand ish. It has a fuck ton of people. That's a, a lot group. of people. It's yeah. a metric. We're international now. We have to say it's metric. A metric. Done. Metric. Fun. A metric. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. In it, countries that ton. have the metric it's system, we don't call it a metric ton. We just call it a ton. Just like they're not. Well, it's not a, trying to be not ice skates. They're just skates, you et cetera. To ice American hockey. Culture. <laughs> yeah, we don't call it ice hockey. It's just hockey. It's not. It's hockey. <laughs> well, see, we have we have street hockey. We have field hockey. We have you have fake hockey, hockey. and then you have real hockey. Yeah, you have not <laughs> hockey, and then you have hockey. Nobody watches hockey here in the U.S. No way. Nope. No, because it's all about ramming your heads together with helmets. I'm sorry. I'm so. I'm supposed to say here in America, nobody watches because America is just one country that. Yeah, it's it's, it's yes. not a continent. It's not a no, continent. no, no. It's not two continents. Several continents. It's just, it's just us. It's it, it, we're in Trump land. It's no. it's all of us. Trumptopia. So, <laughs> so it's no longer America. It's now America. Yeah, I believe it's, it's just America. I, just I America. think I think that happened the. On election day, I wonder, if he's, I wonder if he's going to officially rebrand. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Trump. Oh, yeah. If you get S- away T. with it, yeah, he would never it's name coming. something that without his name on it. It would just be called Trump Land. Like, it, all de- it all depends. If Vladimir gives him permission, he will. <laughs> <laughs> Big Daddy Vlad. Oh, yeah. Like, don't you guys feel bad for us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like, because really, yes, like we we're we are in a like national dumpster fire. I right? don't feel it's... bad. I'm a white male <laughs> <laughs> who has a job that has like sh- shitty insurance, but it's insurance. I mean, yeah. So you're like, I'm gonna survive the Trump presidency, most likely. Like I, physically, you're yeah. not. You're hopefully not going to die until until North Korea. Like, oh well, well, I'm in Indiana too, so like nobody gives a shit about Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we don't know how well us, we don't right? know how well North Korea can can uh, aim their bombs, right? Like Canada should be worried too. Right? We, really, they could be they have aiming enough, for. They don't have to aim. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, we just look at you guys and kind of shake our heads and go like. No, no. I, uh, well, that's, that's the what... Dan Broadbent story, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> we initially, uh, uh, like I initially had started saying like, hey, uh, if you guys need a break, you can always come up and stay on yep. my couch. Like, But that's yeah. way yeah. too many people. They're like, really? <laughs> yeah, like a hundred. Your address? Yeah, yeah. Hundreds of people Nobody's are like, Nobody's taking yeah, us up on that offer for the Isn't couch. there a website for Canadians and Americans to like get married, like to find each other and get married? So 
Get let Americans move I to Canada. That. I don't know if some... that's true. I did hear that. <laughs> Except but... they have to gay marry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's yeah. Christian Whatever. mingle. So yeah. like we yeah. have a website for Christians to meet. So mm. I don't know that. Like cross border though. You oh. can't prove there's not. <laughs> that's What's his true. name that came up here for the states? The uh, the guy that did all the speaking at the universities that everybody hates. Um, Peter LaBarbera. Milo. Yeah. Maybe they met on Christian. Oh, they go. <laughs> Peter LaBarbera. Yeah. And what's his name? Yeah, that'd be hilarious. I'm not familiar yeah. with him. Yeah, I have no idea what he's there talking about. No idea. Yeah, he, uh, that was he's, an uh, he's an anti gay uh, activist. Anti abortion, anti everything. Anti, yeah, very religious type. Yeah, not cool. That's, that's, that is what Jesus would do. So. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. That's right. Well, because mm. Jesus is a white man with a job. And, <laughs> he is a white and, man. He's a and, white Middle Eastern. And he man. had the yeah. best insurance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> until it got canceled. But oh. dang it! <laughs> Jeez, and silence sort of fills the room on that one. There's just no, so should... much. To, uh, yeah. There's so much to unpack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was death of Jesus. I was like, do we talk about the fact that like God sent his himself as his own son to be to sacrificed for himself yeah. to save us all from the sins that he gave us in the first place, but we're all still sinners. Yeah. Or like what route do we go with this? <laughs> Religion makes already, a lot of sense. It makes it's already like, it's yeah. it's eleven yeah. PM. I've had some margs. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the most sense. <laughs> I was gonna ask what scotch are you drinking? Um, ooh, you were assuming scotch. Uh, I am drinking bourbon. It is Angel's Envy bourbon. Sounds oh. good. I, I'm it's, not one of those guys uh, who be like, oh, I can't drink bourbon, I drink scotch. No, they're both fucking delicious. It, they're both delicious, but this is aged in, uh, It's I, th- I believe it's Kentucky bourbon, which I fuck Kentucky, like, <laughs> in the ass. No, <laughs> but it's aged in pork, Actually, most of them are girl. in the goat, I think, in Kentucky. <laughs> They're not all gold fuckers there. You're so mean. I, I don't. I, I that's racist and bigoted. And I get so for it. No, it's okay because he if lived in Alabama. To, yeah. If we're going to just. Oh, so that that gives you. Like, you could say go fuck Kentucky. Right there. Apparently, it's all right. It's okay. Uh, well, there goes our leadership or our listenership in uh, <laughs> Middle America. Yeah. Oh, they, they, they called us goat Kentucky. fuckers. Yeah. I have think, to check yeah, our demographics. I'm not sure. I think that's the center of Trump land, actually. <sighs> Well, it's where Kentucky's where Ken Ham's Ark is. So, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys have a lot of listeners like that are frequenting. You know, well, we don't have a lot of listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I, let's let me put it this way: I have a friend who's Mormon who lived in Kentucky for a while, and he found the people there weird. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. So that says something. Yeah. Like they know they actually ate squirrel stew, sort of thing. Like, and that was an actual thing. Squirrel's not bad. Um. <laughs> that's not, yeah, that's actually no. That's not. I mean, I can't. I'm not speaking from experience, but that's not. I know people do that. They hunt squirrel. Mm. I wouldn't eat it, no. but <laughs> yeah. I don't know I mean, if we have that squirrels here. But see, but see, this is the difference. Like as as somebody who is open to letting people live their lives how they see fit. Like mm. if you want to eat a squirrel, like fucking eat a squirrel. Like I don't give a yeah. shit. Like it yeah. literally, like your happiness and enjoyment in that one area of life has no impact on mine. It's weird as shit, but like <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Where do, where do you fall on eating? Uh, like, uh, dogs. I know that some people have done that. <laughs> uh, again, like I know that's not uncommon in some cultures, but what's the difference between eating a dog versus eating a cow? Especially if you Thank have like you. a small, like a really small farm. You're like I, I knew uh, somebody in Axamine in college had like she had a cow, and like they're like we're raising this, and once it gets to a certain age, we're gonna kill it and eat it. Like, but they had a name for it. They cared for yeah. it a lot. But what's the difference? I think one difference is carnivores are more likely to have uh, different, um, like, um, diseases and stuff in their systems. So that's, maybe there's that, that's one of the reasons why people, I was I was thinking more along lines of uh, uh, divorce, yeah. cows don't fetch very well. <laughs> Some do. Pigs, you can you know, pigs exactly. are super you smart. They don't. <laughs> pigs are super smart, and we make bacon out of them. Yeah. Because it's delicious. They like, they if really they were so smart, delicious. they wouldn't be so delicious. Yeah. Maybe puppy bacon is delicious. 
No, there's a name for the episode. <laughs> Maybe Puppy Bacon is Delicious. Episode well, name. The, I'm not saying it is. I'm, I'm supposed to be the so, evil asshole. What are you doing? We've ostracized people who fuck goats. And people, That's okay. puppy owners, and puppy and owners, people. It just people, it's just people, just people. Yeah, 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 right there, yeah, people, yeah, yeah. people, <laughs> ostracized people. Americans too, I think, are a major demo for us. <laughs> yeah, goat fuckers are people too. Hey, you know what? As long as the goat doesn't say no, right? The goat, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> Destin, like, what the fuck, man? Like, he's just trying science? to outdo me. I, I mentioned puppy bacon, and now he's got to say that goat can fucking is okay. Can we talk about science? I didn't bring up I didn't say no. That's what I learned. That's what I learned. I posted something about consent, like, three days ago on the page. That's what I learned, is if, unless you explicitly say no, it's not rape. So, mm, mm-hmm. I mean, there you go. That's, That's what actually you, the law in some states, isn't it? In some states, uh, yeah. Nobody sends me hate tweets. Nobody. Said, Nobody. Well, well, okay, no, no, that's that's not true. Um, I think you might be tweeting wrong. That Who sends you hate tweets? That app. No, um, <laughs> the other more. the other day. Well, and it like it pops up like every now and again. I get really funny like shill accusations on Twitter um, oh because I I have well okay. There's there's I think a conspiracy theory that the Science Moms movie is sort of a pro. It's like a it's like a big GMO, like big corporate sort of propaganda machine, which, okay. so, sorry, Again. no. Um, yeah, I prove it's like, not. I'm in, my, I'm in my basement. I did a Kickstarter for the film, like just no to all of that. I but edited no. some of your videos that you did. I, yeah, I know, seriously. So, so this, you know, this we, is actually just a front for the big checks that Monsanto is actually sending you? Well, well that's the thing. She did, like, get, she did get a tour. I did. So, I, I did. Oh, cool. I did Monsanto. It was awesome. Um, but so the accusations come because I'm like I'm friends with Vance Crow, the okay best job title ever, director of millennial engagement at Monsanto. <laughs> um, nice, because that's a thing. But because we're because we're friends, and I like I you know retweet his stuff. We obviously communicate and know each other and stuff. Um, that's where I'm essentially like you know doing the the dirty work of this this corporation really which dirty. well that does look like a pretty expensive step machine behind you i know it's this is <laughs> this is just this is the the basement that monsanto built um nice. i have nice. my brief, briefcase of money in the corner somewhere um nice. but yeah so these i so like so the science moms hashtag on twitter kind of has its own little set of trolls that like pop up every now and again and start like trying to fight with me and i really don't engage that much because it's just which is you know. too bad like that's I, like half the fun of doing this. I, I know but but there's like there's enough other people that that have fun with engaging with these people like i i mean and they this was like days ago i think on monday they were they were starting their like latest round of of tweeting and just yesterday night still getting notifications of like these wow. tweets going yeah like they they're just like conspiracy theorists sort of mm-hmm. about like GMOs wow. causing autism, I think was their argument. <laughs> well, that's, that's a first. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's not a so, first, but I've heard helpful. that before, but yeah. So like, so now, yeah, that, so GMOs, um, and vaccines, I guess both cause vaccines autism. cause GMOs and, the, and it's all connected. Yeah. It's all that's big, right. big yes. GM, big biotech and big pharma conspiracy maybe. And, and then they then they always inevitably say, "Well, aren't you concerned about children?" And as science moms, <laughs> yeah. should be concerned about science and children. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I am, but not your whatever you're talking about. Like, oh gosh, all I got shit. in my head right now is uh, from Simpsons, Lovejoy. Think of the children. Mm. Won't someone think of the children? <laughs> yeah. that, that's pretty yeah. much like that is pretty much all of the like anti GMO like anti-vax is activists right? is like that's their like battle cry is like you know we're doing it for kids and whatever and it's like no you're you're not Polio you're not. for the kids yeah. <laughs> not how it works no no so so yeah i i get i get the occasional like nasty tweets and stuff or whatever but it's usually just around like 
this weird shill accusation, which nah, <laughs> not, not true. I mean, like the thing is too, that they don't really understand is if, if the, like something I was working on was funded by some company or whatever, like I would say it. Yeah. It's like everything. They, they bought me, Monsanto bought me three beers a month ago. Like <laughs> I met, like I hung out with Vance and Monsanto yeah. bought me some beer. Like that's okay. really cool. That's, <laughs> you yeah. totally sold out. <laughs> right. Exactly. He is. Totally worth it. Yeah. Plus, you know, was it organic beer? It was local beer, but otherwise no, it's but good. I can't prove it wasn't. <laughs> so yeah, local Monsanto beer. beer. So GMO <laughs> beer. GMO. It was all the GMOs <laughs> beer yeah. form. And now they modified. were trying to give you autism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was super hops, wasn't it? Yeah. So uh yeah. what is it. what is your favorite skeptical topic? Is is it GMOs and or, or anti vaxxers or do you have another pet topic that you usually Or just on? woo in general? Well, or I mean just- I, <laughs> I love all I love all the woo. Um but I mean I guess as far as like like the I mean I've I've gotten into a lot of like especially the GMO and food like food issues with the film and stuff. Um, But then like, I think that the things that make me kind of like ragey are some of the like alt med type of practices, like, like chiropractors and like bait, like chiro, like chiropractor (laughs) stuff on babies, like especially makes me like, I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, Dan's (laughs) like written blog posts and like posted videos about that kind of stuff. And it's just, what's the harm? Right. (laughs) Right. Ugh. It's not hurting so, anybody. Well, like I, I had um, other parents tell me, like when I had, like my older son, when he was kind of crying a lot when he was a baby, someone recommended taking him to a chiropractor. Jeez. And I just like, wow. did you I recommend could, that they go fuck themselves? I mean, I hope that that's what my <laughs> face at least told them because I just like, I don't even know if I responded or if I just walked away because it was like, are you kidding me? Right. Like, wow. just no, no, I am not going to take my like two month old baby to get his back cracked. It's or, weird like, when you meet these people in real life, you know, like, cause you see that, you know, they troll around on the internet, yeah. but, and then, you know, you'll have a perfectly rational conversation. Like I was talking to another parent while waiting for my kid in judo class the other day. And then he was saying, oh, well, my kid, I was having trouble sleeping. You know, we, we use these great homeopathic remedies. And I'm just like, man, like, I get, like, you know, my immediately, my, my perspective of this person totally changed. Cause like I've been talking to him for months and suddenly I'm like, oh, I didn't know you were an idiot. Like, oh, <laughs> I don't know they're an idiot. <laughs> they just have this one blind spot where I, I, yeah, they yeah. they are susceptible and they've fallen into yeah. a trap of that that's been like intentionally like designed and set. Yeah, you're more generous than I am. I'm an asshole. You're, you're <laughs> yeah. good. You're right. No, you're think, right. Yeah. I well, I mean, a I know, but b <laughs> it's it's. It's like these people like are it's what they do like they're con artists like that's what how they make their money is, is by doing that and so if they if they were actually rational that's why it's so hard to do what we do and actually be you know sustainable about it is like the rational voices don't stand out they don't get the attention that they get because we're not spouting off bullshit and yeah. nonsense like that so it's not going to get nearly as much attention yeah, and we're also not as sexy, right? It's like, you know, it's like, oh, this will cure this and it'll do that and I'll help you there. And we're like, no, it won't. And that's, that's so much <laughs> less exciting than the school. It's a, you know what I mean? Yeah. Miracle cure. I was yes. talking to somebody and they actually um, recommended that I take Loki to a chiropractor to cure his autism, my son. And I said, oh, well. God. He's seven. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, that, that might work, but I'm going to try the witch doctor first and then the shaman. <laughs> And did you say that for that, real? Yeah. <laughs> and how did you know these people? Huh? How did you know these people? They they, they came in to, to look at cars. The customers. <laughs> yes. People who oh you wanted God. to take their money from them. Yes. I see. And wow. what did they say? Did they buy a car from you? No, they weren't oh. buying a car anyway. Oh. <laughs> that would be awesome if they bought a car anyway. Fuck them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. How about you, Dan? What's your pet woo um, I don't see that's that's my whole thing is everything is interesting to me. 
So I don't have just one thing that gets me more upset, I guess, than than the other. Uh, if I had to pick one, and I don't know if this is, is within the realm of what we're looking for here, but I think religion in general is the great like skeleton key to just everything. And that's why, and I know Natalie feels kind of similar uh, to that, but it, uh, and that's why I focus on it so much because if you, if you can believe that a, a virgin got pregnant, like the only time in the history of history and uh, squirted out a kid. And then that kid was the son of God who sent himself to save us from, like his own creation from himself. And if you don't like him enough, then he's going to send you to a bad place that he created because he doesn't like you. If you believe all that bullshit, then it's, it's not a far stretch to get you to think, well, maybe, you know, these pesticides are, that are sprayed on these crops, uh, you know, well before they're picked are somehow, you know, gonna gonna give me the autisms, and I'm saying autism with Z on the end. <laughs> so I don't. I, I think that's what. Z. I think he meant Z. Yeah, Z. I think he meant Z. We say right. Z. Z. Yeah, oh, cause, you do. Cause we're right. Because right. yes. we're, we're right. <laughs> and we'll pronounce the U in all of the words too, like yes, color. That's right. Yeah. To, to be fair, I don't think the Bible actually claims that Jesus was squirted out of Mary. Just to be, <laughs> just, just to I give was, the benefit of the doubt to well, the Holy Book. The I'm just saying. Say that. How did he I get in? Maybe he was squirted. Let me tell you, I don't know how many births you've squirt. been at, but they don't really squirt. Two. I mean, there's, maybe they're squirty sounds, and, but it's two, and, mainly and an awful ripping. Cut and extracted. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I've seen the mother of my child on the inside. Yeah. Was there squirting? Was, like, was there yeah, squirting? Let me look. I'm going to look. Like, why would you? It's fascinating. Oh, was there I, squirting? I, I'm confused. I thought you were going to say that I don't, that technically the Bible, I don't think they pronounce it Zed. <laughs> yeah, no, in the original Aramaic, it's Zed, not Z. Yeah, that's right. I thought it was... <laughs> I'm... So sorry. <laughs> good, yeah. good Canadian. Good, good. Yeah, that was... uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 I can, I can do this. I'm not that drunk. Sorry. <laughs> like it. it was okay. Um, we'll take it. Sorry. Well, eh? Natalie, are you working on any of, any other documentaries, or are you guys both no. doing any kind of speaking gigs or anything? Um, no other documentaries. We're, I mean, I work on the podcast. That's, that's pretty much. <laughs> that's about sweet. it. Well, you're so a parent. You have a couple of kids. Is that what you? I have a couple of kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty busy. Uh, almost four year old and a two year old. Um, so, I do that. Yeah. Well, and, and since you're female, time. since you since yeah. you're female, you wouldn't get paid to work anyway, right? So. No. Right. I mean, yeah. So it, it doesn't yeah. even well, matter. Just eighty percent as much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> don't get <laughs> us started. Just don't. Don't even. Just back. Control Z. Control Z. Control Z. No. <laughs> we, we're having a half just hour stop, discussion about that later. Don't so. even know. Yeah. Don't uh, don't start are, with him. Are we denying that the gender wage gap is real? We hearing? don't need to get into that yet. We we're, really we're discussing, need to that for. We're discussing. I'm trying to the save you here, buddy. I'm trying to save you. We're, we're, we're gonna, you don't really, have to save me when I have facts on my side. I don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're we're going to discuss the fine points of it because it's obviously that, that it exists, just not in the overshadowed pure. Oh, 72 so what you're sense. saying is that there's nuance to the issue. Of course, it's it is. <laughs> of course, it is. Yep. Weird how there's nuance of course to there something, to, to anything that exists, so like and that it's issues. not a hard and fast yeah, rule. Yeah, it's, oh, it's almost like that happens so for weird. everything, eh? That's weird. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> I've been talking social justice with, like, a dozen people the last week, and uh, that's basically all it boils down to, is that everybody's, there's it's a nuanced subject, and nobody knows everything about it, <laughs> So there's all this. It's okay. I was told. I was told today that the only reason my page blew up is because I'm a white male. So oh, neat. that's good to know. Wow. I mean, in, in, on the same post where I said, "Hey, white male privilege exists," they said, "Well, you only get this because you're because you and you don't want to admit that." I'm like, "Well, like, can just, you fucking read?" <laughs> <I> just did. <laughs> like I just said that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where everybody is super civil and super rational. It's on 
it's on the post. It's on the post that I start out saying Bill Nye is not a scientist, and then go into how it's really fucking stupid to not have him be like the face of the March for Science, right. and that's a whole thing. Well, and they don't want him because he's a white male. That's what uh, what uh, I forget what Stephanie Page, who is a board member, said oh, okay. because. Uh, the quote is, but I do feel comfortable saying to you what I said to the steering committee. He is a white male, and in that way, he does represent the status quo of science of what it is to be a scientist, which is Ugh. anyway, we don't I mean, we don't have like three hours for me to like rant about like, all the <laughs> no, that that's right. That yeah. The dude's been a science fanboy for 40 years. Like, right. who else is going to do it? Fuck David Suzuki. It's not going to be that Don't get me started on that guy. Don't get me started. <laughs> could be NDT. Could be the NDT. Yeah, yeah, yeah but he, he gets every NDT. other show. We need someone. He gets every other fucking someone. show. Yeah, well, like... It could be me. Idiot, I'm a scientist but... and I'm a girl. Choose me. <laughs> but are, I you, volunteer. are you brown or black? No, or... no I'm very, exactly. very, very so, pale. So shut the fuck up. Your opinion does not matter. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend from Sri Lanka who's a scientist. Can we choose her? Uh, that would, she's brown. That would check off a couple. But is she really work. dark brown or is she kind of she's lightish brown? brown. Not, she's super dark brown. She's You got to get the right shade. She's really awesome. She's Muslim. No, but she's not Muslim. No, her family so was nobody gives Buddhist. 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 Hey, Muslim. Singalese. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She's like everybody's Buddhist or something like that. It yeah, doesn't well, matter. Well, she if she's not white, Buddhist. if she's not white or Native American, <laughs> or then she's Muslim. Cover this on. That's. This is America. We're talking America. We're talking America. Do you want a Muslim? I know she. I know many female yeah. Muslim scientists. I can go for them too if you want. Like I got in our part of the country. But they're being suggested by you, who is white. So yeah. therefore, Does patriarchy. It not count? In, in, Actually, you know, you know, know what happened to me this week? How, I don't know how the social, I don't know how these extreme like leftist like minds work. Like if I knew, then I could. We could solve the problem. I have a question for yeah. you. I have a question. Am I here? My question is, am I being too sensitive? Because here, here's what happened to me. A friend of mine posted about, he's living in Pasadena now, posts a picture of the Big Bang Theory Road. And I was like, well, that's kind of lame because it's named after the show and not the cosmological um, period of time. <laughs> it's just that's so that's lame. And so then he sends me a message saying, hey, Lisa, the word lame is ableist and I don't use it anymore. Oh, Jesus. And so am I being, <laughs> was I, am I? I being too like, I was kind of just like he is actually a professor of astrophysics <laughs> at a university in California. Can you give me a first name. Uh, or, Jorge. Or like any Jorge. His name is Jorge. Hey Jorge, go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Because I, I felt like am I being too sensitive? Am I? I mean, like if I was really a, actually lame a, and I couldn't walk, would I feel bad a, when people said people were lame? Or did I mean this metaphorically? Like this sign is like lame. Like it has no legs. It has. You know what I mean? Well, did the, I? What was I? Was I? Was I? Was I being rude to like handicap people? I don't know. But I, I just uh, responded not at all. Fucking like regressive shit that I've heard all day, and again, I, I was told that Isn't my it? opinion doesn't matter because I'm a white male. So I'm sorry yeah. for even sorry. He's for, actually for the, even. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Either all words matter it. or no words matter. You know, I'm just, of the no words matter. Just, <laughs> my son is autistic, and I use retard every fucking day because my son's not retarded. He's autistic. Okay, but here's what I'm saying. Donald As Trump's a, a fucking good. retard. <laughs> That's the difference. But doesn't there have to be a balance? Like, like on the other no. hand, you know, if I if I had said, yes. you, you know, like, you you can use like <laughs> racial slurs or something, and that's you know, I, I would say, well, okay, no, I, sh I don't think people should be using that. I mean, I don't think it should be illegal, but like, I, I would prefer if people around me didn't say. I, I dare you all to go. It's an issue of it. Into the hood it's and an issue. call a First Nations person a Nietzsche. I dare any of you. What is that? <laughs> is that a bad? Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. that's right. Anyway. We would be yeah. killed, right? Yeah. No, that's. Uh, no. Yeah. I'm allowed to do it. I'm allowed to do it. I'm, yeah. I'm brown. brown. I'm the only brown one here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But to get, to get back to that point that you're talking about. Whatever. Um, <laughs> it's an issue of if, if, you're, if you're doing it at the expense of a person or if you're just using, like, saying the word lame. Like, if you're saying. I don't even fucking know how to like, use. Do you remember when we were kids? Like, like, that sign like, is like, gay. Like, that's so yeah. gay. Yeah. Is that okay anymore? Using yeah. it as I, a, yeah, it, I wouldn't say that's so gay, but yeah. we don't call people. We don't. We don't use lame as a pejorative towards people. Like I, at least I don't. I don't know anybody that does, and I talk to a lot. Of I people. call Gumby lame all the time. Yeah. I'm like, you are such it's, a lame motherfucker. Th they're fucking euphemisms. Who cares? I feel like it's metaphorical, though. It's like I, like, I find it, sure. you yeah. like. 
I wonder I wonder if Anyways. there isn't something to the idea that maybe we should at least think about it. Right. Exactly. That's what I so I'm like so my me, my knee jerk was was Dan's knee jerk which would be like fuck you. Right. But then like I kind of went to the all the way to the Corey side like well maybe I should think about it. Then I'm like fuck I'm not even thinking about this anymore <laughs> and I like never even responded to this guy. Like I was just like no, now, like the the word like retard, like you use, like I I'm not comfortable using that, and and, and I don't use that myself. And that's fine. Uh, that's cool. But you'll use yeah. lame. Will you now? Yeah. What about mm-hmm. stupid or idiot or <laughs> moron? This is my Trump one. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I don't. I don't understand how. Like when. When like like words like moron and retard like those used to be actual clinical terms. Yes. But like, w- was yeah. lame ever? Yeah, if like yeah. you're lame, lame, it means you can't walk. Like a descriptor, yeah, of somebody who can't walk. Like it's like, like being like, mute or whatever. You know, it's like like if you're born with like a stump foot or something or whatever that's called, okay. like a club foot, you're lame. But yeah. still, like I, well, that's, that that's not that's, that's a, not the that's not the colloquial use though. Exactly. No, it like, cause, like nobody says yeah. that. Yeah, I, here's what I, I have not heard that being. As here's what I offensive. actually wanted to say to him. I wanted to say, this, "You are the reason Donald Trump got elected." Because, <laughs> no, I wanted to say this. No, and I mean this rationally because the what people on the far what right not? look at this and say the people on the left are so fucking retarded that they can't even use the word lame. And you know they're so sensitive and they're so you know, like or they're they, so lame they, they can't use the word retarded. I know they're, they're just they have this knee jerk reaction like. It just, it just bothers that, me that you won't let me use the word lame so much. I'm going to vote for Trump. F- fuck you, idiots. But That's what I, I like honestly think just, that happens. Isn't it just like off, often it's just people like saying, hey, um, that's not necessarily cool. And people are going, ah, I'm going to fucking burn the place down. It's true because my friend, he, <laughs> this guy, he was not like that rude about it. He was like, I just sort of don't really like it and I find it kind of ableist. Like It wasn't like he was like, right. you're an ableist mm-hmm. fucking asshole. Well, here's here's like, how the no. conversation should go. <laughs> Hey, that's retarded. Hey, please don't use that word. It offends me. Oh, I'm sorry. I won't use it around you. Or fuck you. I'll say whatever I want. Hey, where are you going? Why aren't you talking to me anymore? That's it. <laughs> you have the right to say whatever you want, but you're, you don't. You're not. But you don't have a right to from freedom of the consequences. Right. Well, and so, if somebody feels they should challenge you, though, then that's fine. Then they should challenge you. Yeah. Yep. If I'm a racist asshole, someone should challenge me. Yeah. Sure. Somebody's saying Hitler had some good ideas, then I think we need to like, be like, you know what? I don't think that's right, and let's talk about it. But if somebody's saying something like as harmless as, oh, that's lame, well, that's offensive, like... Pick your battles, that's, maybe. That's, that's, that's Hitler did have good ideas. He came up with... Uh, that is absolutely one of the reasons why Trump won. Okay, finish your sentence so nobody fucking thinks you're a Nazi. Hitler came up with deficit budgeting. <laughs> deficit budgeting. It's it saved okay. it saved the free world. So okay, <laughs> I'm gl- I had to give you that opportunity to finish. I didn't we want to. Anyway. the Nazi. We can punch them in the face now. <laughs> but you can't do anything with, so- with selected selective editing. Like yeah. Hitler. <laughs> Hitler was a white male. Just saying. I'd punch Gumby. <laughs> Except I'm Have here. You? I'm here and I'm tall. Hitler's only this tall. He's over there. Mm. Oh. 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 Nobody can see what you just did. I don't, no. <laughs> I don't get it's it. It's terrible. Uh, Bad. So Marvel. science. So science and stuff. Natalie's being awfully quiet there. So I, I was I was letting Dan have this this topic. How so did you guys? She doesn't get hate mail. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. How did you guys come up Jeffrey with the idea for uh, for your God of the Week? Oh, that who who thought of that idea? Was it was it Devin? Was it Devin or was it you? Like who was it? Why not both? Why not both? Yeah, I think if it's a good I, idea, take credit. So we we did our we did a, our first couple shows with our friend Devin, and I think it was I think it was maybe him who had this idea of like let's do a God of the Week, and I and he picked the first couple of them, and then it then we kind of realized it was something we had to do every week, and now I feel like. I have to keep we looking for one. one. Yeah, we. Skipped I know it one we week skipped. We skipped it one week, and somebody said, "Oh, you didn't do a God of the Week." So then I guess I realized, well, like, oh, so you basically it. like profile like a different, like, a different. It is what it sounds god. like. I guess it, it really is. That's it's profiling. What it, it's what it, we profile a different god, and um, <laughs> you know, because they're all so ridiculous, and all mm. stories about like religion and gods are 
I mean, they're all just kind of batshit crazy. Um, and but and we won't run out for like fifty-seven years. We're, we're never gonna run out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. we are, well, we there, there's never, over ten thousand of them. Do so you so have many. a favorite? Wow. Yeah. That's in Hinduism alone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let's the Asian see. gods so far, are the best. So so far, I mean, I guess. The one that really kind of started it off with, like, making sure we talk about, like, dicks and stuff like that as much as possible with the gods. I think I think it was Osiris and his golden dick that really started, nice. like, yeah. that really, that really, Mine. it really grabbed people, like, <laughs> that, that we told <laughs> So we, we told, mm. we had the story, yeah, of Osiris and um, his... He died and his body parts were scattered all over Egypt, but then his dick wasn't found. And so his wife um, put them all back together, but then she got a golden dick for him and she <laughs> fucked him. You, and then got, she was you gotta, like, you gotta fuck your husband. You have well, to yeah. fuck him with his golden dick. Because so, otherwise you're yeah. not a good wife. That's right. Right. That's so, right. so that's Hashtag misogyny. <laughs> oh Dan. So, so that so so I'm gonna say Osiris was my favorite. Then somewhere after that, I forgot the name of um wait, I forgot which god it was, but that got essentially crushed by a vagina. Cause he tried because he was walking. Yeah, that was like the subsequent walking. episode, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, because he was trying to walk into a vagina. Then we had I think I remember as, you, yeah. as you do. As you do. As, you do. as, you do. Then, as then is we, customary. And then we started getting into more like jizzy stories recently, um, because nice. we're we're a really adult show, um, mature oh. people, who, you know, whatever. So like we even we brought back um, one of our former guests on the show, Matthew O'Neill, our like atheist theologian friend, because that's a thing. And he told us yes. he told a story about um, Jesus jizzing into his hand and eating it was that what it was because he pulled a yeah. lady out of his side well, and yeah he pulled a lady out of his yeah. side this, is, this is the cutting room floor of the bible <laughs> jesus what this is in the bible i need to read the bible it, the cutting <laughs> room. Said, no, yeah, it didn't make it in the final cut <laughs> oh for fuck's sakes yeah, but he pulls a woman out of his side, uh, masturbates himself into yeah. his own hand, and then eats himself. So, like, God eats okay. himself. So you do, like, yeah. sex God things. Because I was wondering if you did well, profile – because the, the <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses have all sorts of great stuff, that they, different planets and shit going on. I don't remember. Yeah, it, it, it just – it took a turn. At one point, it took a turn into, like, talking about semen way too much um, because, yeah, there was some <laughs> other – some Ancient would God. say not enough. It was, it was um, oh, it was this God, a tomb, who masturbated and like into his own mouth and he spit it out. And then that's how like humanity came to that's, be. Or something. Yeah, that's Earth. What Neat. You do. That's just rational, yeah. though. So like, so we're, we're teaching people about sense. how this all happened. It's like new okay. meaning to the Big Bang. And it just. Yeah. So how come that's not as popular as a flat Earth? <laughs> Oh, like There's we could we could make it popular. Theory. Start a Facebook page for it, Dan. Make mm. some memes and like let's yeah, for sure. Some things. funny memes, and all of a sudden it'll take off. So we have like the Big Bang Theory, and then, <laughs> and then the big the Big <laughs> Bang Theory. Then, <laughs> <laughs> You're not funny. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I also create these great silences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yes. see, not funny. No, that's it. <laughs> so, uh, I guess we're gonna we're gonna probably wrap it up here. Um, where can people find your stuff? Dan, go. Uh, a science enthusiast on Facebook, a science enthusiast dot com, science enthusiast podcast uh, dot com. Uh, see, I'm also on Twitter at a sci enthusiast ooh even instagram <laughs> hey. uh, nice. uh, i'm on tumblr i'm on grinder i don't four chan four chan <laughs> eight chan all the places all the chans i don't know you can't prove that i'm not on grinder <laughs> <laughs> it's cuz you can't prove a negative buddy unless you're doing it's, math I, <laughs> <laughs> now we're just going to assume you are on Grinder, though. <laughs> he, is, he is everywhere on the internet. Like I told, already said, I'm he's totally all over. I'm fine with that assumption. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and I'm, wh- I'm whatever not takes in to as get many the followers, places. right? You're not yeah. in as many places. I'm not in as many places on. You're the not internet, on Grinder. 
Girls not, not on, on, not on Grinder. Um, I am on Twitter. <laughs> like he said, that's where you, where people can direct the the love letters. No yes. hate mail. Okay. I have I have people who already are doing that um, a little bit, but um yeah. So um at NC Newell on Twitter. Um, I have Facebook pages for Science Moms, and I have another one, uh, Skeptical Parenting, which is sciencey stuff plus a little more of like the atheist type of stuff. That nice. I Perfect. Also I think- cover. Um. And yeah, and our science enthusiast podcast. Maybe we'll get a listener out of this. Maybe. Maybe an extra Canadian one. Maybe an extra Canadian one who's interested in in gods and stories about them ejaculating. Like yeah. everyone needs a little more of that in their Sign life. Sign me up. Yeah. Subscribe. Yep. You had me at jizz. You had me at jizz. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> there I'm is so our new podcast like tagline. You. <laughs> you had me at jizz. Like, come for the science day for the jizz. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, come, come, come for, for the jizz. <laughs> coming for yes. science. Coming for science. <laughs> now we have a title. <laughs> we are an intelligent show. <laughs> uh, clearly. You guys have yeah. been awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you for yeah. having us. We'll it's definitely want to have you guys back on again. That was fun. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For longer next time. Next time, maybe Corey will be a little more serious. <laughs> <laughs> One can hope. Yeah. One can hope. Yes. Right on. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, we're going to go to a commercial. If you like what we're doing and want to help us keep the lights on, go become a patron at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. You can hear the bonus half hour that we record every episode and get a shout out when you support the show. Become a patron for just a dollar an episode at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. Or you can support the show by ordering a t-shirt, mug or other gear from our store at kathypress.ca forward slash brainstorm podcast gear. If you can't afford to become a patron or buy gear, then why not give us a rating or write a review on iTunes or Stitcher? Every rating makes it easier for people to find us. Thanks for your support. We are given one life full of billions of small and large decisions to be somebody, to change, to be kind, to give hope, to become a better person and to leave a lasting impact on this planet. It is a decision to be made every single day while your heart is still beating. We've made our decision. Absence of clothing. Atheist and science-based apparel and merchandise. Donating 50% of our profits to charity. Look good and feel good without God. Check us out at absenceofclothing.com and find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest for discount codes and other sweet swag. Use the code BRAINSTORM at absenceofclothing.com and get 10% off. Looking for something new and exciting? Or maybe just a change from the old Atheist Show format? Cellar Door Skeptics Podcast provides listeners with hours of enjoyment each week on Spreaker and iTunes. Check us out as we talk politics, religion, science, reviews, books, and music, along with the occasional interview just for a twist. Join Christopher Tanner and Chris Hanna every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern as they bring fresh content to you. Walk with us through the cellar door as we help you prepare for the revolution. You can find us on Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and even on Facebook. And we're back. Welcome back. So uh, we're going to discuss the gender wage gap or uh, pay gap um, but first, I want to say thanks to Mary, who is listening, who uh, made a comment on our Facebook page about she doesn't feel uh, using terms like retard or lame where she intends to. She likes to use terms that insult the person she's directly insulting. So, uh, And that's that's fair. But I'm the use of the word. I would never use the word retard, for example, as an insult or as a pejorative against somebody. Um, just as a euphemism, it's, right? It's and, and I get where Mary's coming from because it, it can be a hurtful word. So I, I try to avoid descriptors like that when I'm talking to people. I'll, I'll call you a, a a tool or an idiot, right? Or an ass. Yeah. And then if I'll I want to insult you, I'll think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because ass doesn't isn't really hurtful. 
<laughs> this could be a good uh, segment another time, actually. Sure. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. I think yeah. I think it'd be worth talking about. I, I think, think we can get a good hour out of that. That's yeah. a good idea. I have lots to say about that stuff. Sweet. Right on. Okay, so uh, I have a, a bit of an opening that I want to talk about with this wage gap subject. Uh, first, there seem, it seems to be two things going on. I, I don't think it's technically controversial to say that there is a difference between the way that women in society and men in society uh, make money. They're, like Women are earning, on average... Less money than men. I think that's completely uncontroversial. Uh, the way that this breaks down into individual industries and careers seems less clear. But on the whole, we have a society where for one reason or another, working women are earning less than working men. Uh, second, I think that while economists often have the numbers to contribute to the conversation, they often la- lack the societal context or the social science that gives a frame to those numbers, which we get, like I say, from social sciences. I recently had a conversation with Alex Jules about this effect on the wage gap for African-American men in, in the U.S. And I think that it plays an important role when discussing gender wage gaps as well. I've, ha- I've heard it called an earning gap, which I, I think is a more accurate description. Definitely. Um. From my perspective, it doesn't really matter what we call it. There is a difference in the amount of money earned by women and men, and it is something that we as a society need to acknowledge and investigate so that we can understand where it comes from. I think calling it a myth does a disservice to the idea. (laughs) It it may not be the same numbers that people recognize. Like It may not be a straight across 77 cents to a dollar or whatever, but saying straight out that it's a myth, even if, even if you can reduce it to seven cents on the dollar or two cents on the dollar difference, then it's still not technically a myth because it exists, right? right? And uh, I think that what we really need to do is, is uh, look at what's happening, put that into a social framework and try to understand why it's happening. And that's just my take. And I think following that, I think one of the, of course, we're two white males talking about it. So <laughs> glad, glad we have a little more balance here. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, the I original think crew, this to our is, vaginas. Yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> as, as long as they don't have any monologues, we're good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's what vagina sound like. <laughs> I think you should seek That's immediate an medical assistance. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Right, right to the vaginas. <laughs> um, well talking done. vaginas. I'm, I'm actually a little concerned. <laughs> hey, I work in healthcare. I know what vaginas sound like. Okay, you sound like parents and Charlie Brown. Mm. Wah, 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 so, wah. <laughs> so following that, I think the, the the one of the main issues that people need to address or understand when they're talking about uh, the earning gap or the wage gap. Uh, is yes, it, it exists. It definitely exists, and whether it's seventy-six cents or six cents or five cents, it's if if there's inequality, it's inequality. Yeah. Um, but I th- I think we need to draw attention that to the fact that it's not equal work for different pay for the most part. That right. still exists, but in certain uh, industries. That- well, and, and the framework around that is you don't have two people doing the same job. At a at one getting paid seventy six percent of what the other person's making, in that exact same field, you don't see that much. Right. I think a lot of it has to do with more sociological issues uh, than the straight uh, financial ones. Because a corporation would hire if they could pay women seventy six percent what they pay men, they would hire all women. It just. Because corporations don't care; they want to spend the least amount of money. Yeah, if so. that was if that was the actual reason that women. Like right. if they could just get away with paying women less, right. then they. Yeah. But quite often, uh, quite often these uh, these companies are paying women less, or well, maybe not quite often, but on occasion these w- companies are paying women less. But it's not. Uh, it's considered taboo to discuss your your income, you know. So so the men and women that are working amongst them, they don't under they don't know this, and the, or. The company that sell itself isn't really paying that close attention, 
and this these decisions are made on a lower level on a management type level more often men get promotions yep. instead of women uh, and it's i did delve into this after we had that huge discussion on the show like two months ago right yeah. um and what i came up with is is sometimes it is sexist that exists, and that exists both ways. It's just predominantly being sexist in the favor of men. Some industries, it's sexist in the favor of women, but most of them are in the favor of men. Which industries are those? Uh, the one that men pay for. <laughs> porn. Yeah. Uh, well, women, yeah. Women make substantially well, more in porn than men, generally. There's also, in music, there's also some industries, uh, some issues with porn, too. Yeah. But. It, and in music, yeah. women, women that actually negotiate <laughs> their, own, their own, uh, yeah. their own um, contracts tend, tend to get better paid in, in, some, in some aspects. Yeah, but how many of them actually... Right, right, but I'm, anyway. I, I'm not getting specific. Yeah. I'm just saying that that happens, right? Um, a good reason, or not a good reason, but one of the main reasons why men get promoted more often is the the further you get promoted, the less uh, flexibility you have with your job. And a lot of times women will sacrifice earning more to have more flexibility for home the family life. and yeah. home life. And, that's, yeah. and it happens. And unfortunately, women are still viewed as the caretaker of the family and, and the homemaker and... And all of to that some extent, yeah. crap. Yeah. Well, it's bullshit. Like I've told Jen, as soon as you graduate, you get a job that pays more than me. <laughs> I'm gonna stay home, and I'm gonna yeah. go back to school, right? Because yeah. why not? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but that's not a common thing in society. I think another thing you also have to appreciate is that w- in our society, women cannot act as men do and be perceived like for example if, if, I, if I wanted to be a manager right if I wanted to have a p- position like a leadership position in, in an organization um, I, I couldn't be as, in the same level of assertiveness the same level of uh, of um, well you'd be a bitch exactly right? <laughs> yeah. so, that's, that's the sociological yeah. issue exactly like, like if yeah. you, you can ask people how much did like, how much did how much percentage did this woman talk at a meeting and versus what percentage did this man talk at a meeting and people will overestimate how much a woman contributed and underestimate how much a man yeah. contributed right um, the, the way we perceive women women cannot just act like a, like if you suddenly got the body of a woman and you you and you, you were you <laughs> Well, I wouldn't no. be here. <laughs> no, but but transgender people, have, like people who quote unquote pass, have actually are actually very interesting people to talk to on this right, issue. Right. People who you know used to be like be perceived as a man, and now they like if they're passing as a woman in the sense that people think that they're just a cis woman. Yes. Um, that's really that's they actually there's actually yeah. a lot of a lot of. Um, uh, information out there to say that they, they notice a big difference in how they're treated. Right. You can't act the same way. You know, so, so you can't, I mean, it's hard to say, but <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's difficult to get it to, to get to that management position because people don't think of you that way, basically. And you cannot act in such a way that it's, it's difficult to walk that line, I guess, and how yeah. to act that way to be a leader and to, but, and, but not to be a bitch and not, and to be able to have people follow you, but also to be, have authority, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I think that's definitely an issue. I think we have an issue of getting like women have an issue of getting in the door sort of thing. I think that, I mean, there's been many studies again, who, that show that if you send out a resume, um, and yeah. it's exactly the same resume and you put John Smith on one and Jane Smith on the other. Um, people rank John Smith more highly than they rank Jane Smith. Yeah, that's uh, that's similar to the racial racialized names on yeah. this on resumes and stuff, too. Like that's yeah. it's yeah. <laughs> Shaniqua ain't getting no job. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, but she could, she could have cool. she could have the same exact qualifications, qualifications and often better qualifications hmm. than. Corey Johnston <laughs> and, well, and Corey Johnston yeah, still would end up. Yeah, that's um, and You got my job as a medical physicist. I would have yes. been pissed. <laughs> though, <laughs> though it'd be a disservice to the women that have made it to the top to not to not mention that that is changing and that has been changing. I don't think it's a disservice. I think it's just saying that they have they have faced barriers that um, that it's potentially a man in their position might not have faced, and yeah. they had to walk a line and invent a personality of a of a person in a leadership position, of a woman in a leadership position that can't exactly emulate the per, like the way that a man in a leadership position. No, no. Has. What, what I'm saying is, looking the, at it from the outside and just looking at the big picture, 
uh, saying that that women just don't get that the get promoted and stuff. Mm-hmm. The ones that fought in tooth and nail to mm-hmm. get where they were, um, they're they're leading the change. I've that. never met a, wo- a woman in a in a leadership position who didn't acknowledge the difficulties that she faced getting getting there, yeah. um, and, and would have mm-hmm. would think of it as a disservice to, to discuss those at all. No, 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 a disservice for everybody else to not recognize those people is what I meant. Not her recognizing the struggle, mm. to other people recognizing those women. Um, another another big reason that I found is if you look at countries that uh, don't have a specific organized religion, women have much better roles there. Some of them have female prime ministers. The more yeah, the more secularized a nation is, the less yeah exactly yeah. So one of the one of the big detractors is obviously religion and any religion. I think any main. I think religion. some of it, uh, the problem is that uh, these these gender roles uh, quite often are so ingrained that yeah. it, it's hard for us to not even uh, to not only recognize that they're there, but then to additionally change the way that we view things, and 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 then uh, on top of it to to yeah to recognize and, and change our behavior. I think I mean, it, I it's think- very. One of the things I saw, like watching a couple of these videos or while well, researching this on to the, just before the podcast, but right was that they were talking about is also is where the wage gap is is also because of the type of yeah in because the type of business the, industry. the industries right because once again sociologically women are you know. Men are supposed to go and get into the the hard sciences, getting into business, and do this. And women, you can go and do these things, social work, or yeah, teaching. or whatever. I was, yeah. about, I was just about to talk about this. So, so. One of the, the original video that uh, Leo had posted, um, where the implication was that women are so like they're choosing. It's all this. There's always there. It's all this. This, this <laughs> right. gender wage gap only exists yeah. because of women's choices. Yeah, that's what the, is, that's what the video yeah. was emphasizing, which was I thought was totally. Um, dishonest, honestly. It was so clearly dishonest. Like, look at all these stupid women choosing to go into nursing instead of petroleum engineering when they get to school. That's just, everything is totally equal up to that point. And it is only at that exact point that women in their, in their silly, dumb minds go into nursing, even though they know they won't get <laughs> yeah. paid as much as a yeah. petroleum engineer. What are they thinking, right? Whereas the reality is that we condition uh, girls and women at very young ages yeah. away yeah. from from this stuff, right? Like I remember, like, like I mean, I, I guess my degree is in physics, um, my background is in physics, but I remember in grade 12 looking around my classroom, like my physics class and being like, holy shit, I'm the only white girl in this class. <laughs> There's two brown girls and me and then the, all the rest are right. guys. Like, where did all that? We were the smart ones in elementary school. Yeah. Even, the guys were the dumbest idiots. Like, what <laughs> the hell happened? <laughs> so, like, I, and I didn't, like, I really, I didn't, I, 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 I that's actually when I noticed, like, once they were right. all, and then and the same thing happened, of course, in university. It was, you know, out of the 20 of us that graduated, there were one or two of us who wow. were women. Like, and it just sort of, wow. it, it, I, to, to say that, oh, we, 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 you know, we're, those women, those other women, they were just so silly and they just didn't choose to go into those fields. That's just yeah. it's it's intellectually dishonest. She the, the you can't you can't honestly think that that's actually what's going on. Like, like that's that's not fair and that's not right. It's parents, pervasive since day one. Like yeah, day parents exactly. do push exactly. kids into stereotypical it, instantly. Roles. Like yeah. not even it's not you're instantly out of the womb and you're in a freaking pink thing or you're well, Dave has right. his kids smoking <laughs> like, cigars and. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you've got to start early. Well, the thing is, that's just it. Gender roles are very, like, I think there's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, I don't think we, it's all so subconscious. Like, it's, yeah, it is. It's from day one, you know, oh, you're you're having a boy? Well, you got to paint the walls blue. You got to do this, da, 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 da. You know, and it's, and you do, you can condition them into these roles. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, the wage gap exists. I mean, it, I think the problem is, is it's just like everything else. So there's a line from John Green, I think it was from Crash Course, where truth okay. resists simplicity. And I think that's what this is, is that, yeah, it's really nice and easy to say, oh, you know, the 70, 77 cents or 79 cents, whatever it was. Whereas it's a lot more complex. I right. Mean, 
That number also, uh, I think it's actually 77, if I remember right. right. It depends who you yeah. at, who, where It the depends original, on who's doing the math. The yeah. original number, number actually yeah. just came out, just was, was determined when they figured out off of a census the amount that the average man in, in the U.S. made versus the average woman. It had nothing to do with the jobs or full time or part time right. or any of that. And stuff. my understanding is that number is still that. It's it's just uh, the median income of a woman working whatever a certain right. number of hours, like whatever yeah. full time hours, divided by the median income of men. So it's a very 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 rough yeah. statistic. Well, and yeah. it doesn't break There's down no full to part time. Yeah. Uh, no, my understanding is that number. Like, Everything I've read about is that that's a like you have to have at least whatever thirty seven yeah, hours a week. I, I think that's only full okay. to be so, so that's that. now. But the original one from okay. the '60s didn't take into consideration full or part time. Okay, I don't know anything about that. And there were no um, insurance companies back then that offered any paid leave for right. child for child rearing. Right, which is very comparable to the states now. Yeah. But, yeah, there are insurance companies. You can get insurance that covers it. But mm-hmm. it's sometimes. Yeah. What's it's what's rare. your take on it, social scientist? <laughs> <laughs> well, then, <laughs> actually, everything's being, everything's being said pretty good. I think I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I, <laughs> I, surprise, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think it's it's a socialized thing more yeah. than anything. I. I have this argument with my well, not really an argument, but I guess the discussion with my wife sometimes yeah, because it's, it's not an argument because the wife's always right. Well, no, uh, <laughs> it's it's not really a loud, heated thing. It's just a discussion. Mm-hmm. But anyway, but basically telling her like, well, because I think she wants to really believe that there's like a lot of natural emotional tendencies um, between the genders, and I mean like there might be a very small amount. I don't, you know, in social sciences, we we still will acknowledge the hormonal differences and things like that. Mm-hmm. Right. But but at the same time, the majority of it is is Social definitely construct. conditioned. Yeah. I mean, and we've encountered enough isolated societies to give us that evidence. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not just, you know, an observation in a current society. It's like right. if so there's some societies that have been cut off from everything else and their gender roles are very different, right? right. So yeah. So we do have evidence for that. So uh, social conditioning is the major factor behind why we have things like, you know, tons of women going into nursing, as we're talking about. Right, well, and, right. and with um, the brain, when they say that the brain chemistry, well, that's part of your brain chemistry is written by your, so, by your social upbringing. Yeah, exactly. The, the brain is so. a really fucked up thing. <laughs> so as much as there are chemical differences between different people, I think it's not as big of a factor as right. most people would like to believe. And it's just it's just more, I think, reality informing people's belief because you see everybody, you know, I see the girls with long hair, um, you know, crocheting and knitting and stuff. Uh, so I, 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 I figure that, oh, that must be the way women are. Hey, While well, Corey's do. sitting here drinking beer. You know, seriously, though, <laughs> right? Renee's nursing his bruise yeah. from Krav Maga. You know? Yeah. But, but, that's, but that's, that's what I mean is people see that and then they prescribe that as that's the way things must be then. Right. Because I see that. Yeah. But it's like, no, the b- before all that, there's stuff that happens mm-hmm. yeah. that leads people into what they do. And so. we've all been socialized into our roles as well. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're we're a construct of our environment, obviously. I think so I think one really cool thing. <laughs> I think one really cool thing is that the uh, the younger people of today aren't going to have as strict of social constructs or uh, predetermined child rearing, yeah. uh, especially you know us more leftish families. Mm-hmm. Well, we're not, we're not putting, we'll have to see because the pendulum is yeah, kind of yeah, swinging yeah. a bit. Yeah. But like people like Jen and I, and I'm sure you guys and Corey, we're not putting any social pressures on our kid to be a, a football player or whatever. Corey, Loki wants to be a science teacher. That's okay, but I think these things are like some, yeah. can be really subconscious. Like even though things you don't even know that you're doing, either you think that you're doing, like you're like you know. I think back on things yeah, my mom exactly. did in the in the eighties when I was growing up, and you know she is like you can do anything a man can do, blah blah blah. And here's your Barbie, and you know what I mean. Like it was <laughs> yeah. just yeah, like sure. you know things yeah. that I she was yeah. doing her best that she like the best that she could to to. to 
whatever, try, try to try to make make it a level playing field. But I think yeah. these gender roles are so ingrained; it's yeah. very, very yeah. difficult to. Yeah. to it is. It, it's subconscious. Like, and I'm you not, can do you can do the best job you yeah. want as an individual with yeah. your child, right? And it doesn't matter because mm-hmm. they're surrounded by a whole different world. That's the thing. Like yeah. exactly. for me, like as you know, going into the sciences, it's like okay, like I it never occurred to me that I wouldn't be able to do it, that I would in any way be not like be, like that my gender would have anything to do. And then as you go through it, you. you get people say things to you and, and you and you go yeah. okay uh what no you know like, it, it's just it, it's something that you are actually in this world like so you even if you were raised <laughs> to believe that as a woman you can do anything a man can do you're in a world that doesn't necessarily agree with you so you yeah. still have to yeah. fight right yeah. like you just and you still have to you have to think about these things i think um, I think like, it's fair to say that there is still progress being made, though, right? Sure, like, sure. Yeah, I wasn't saying there was. I'm just saying I don't know that our children are going to live in a gender-free <laughs> utopia. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, well, That's think, also fair. I think say. it's going to get closer every generation, though, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And there's, yeah. there's pushback, Maybe. though. There's always pushback. Like, yeah. We do have a Trump's America now, so... I mean, it's not like moral <laughs> progress is 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 monotonically increasing, right? It's not necessarily yeah, no. that every generation gets better and more ethical than the one before. It, it may be that we have a backslide. Right? It's not. Yeah. There's nothing to say that it's going to get better. There's no forever. guarantee in that. All right. Oh, do we have time? I, you want, I wanted to make a couple points. You betcha. Gumby was talking about how men get the promotions more often than women do, or seek promotions um, because. When you get to the pr- higher levels of employment, there's less opportunity for flexibility. There's there's more hours de- on that are demanded of you until you get to the very top. Until you get to the very top, and then you can go to Mar-a-Lago every weekend if you want to <laughs> play golf. That's yes, what you call exactly. That's great at golf. But but and one of those videos said men get more promotions because they work more hours because they they. Um, they need somebody at the law firm to, you know, come in at short notice. But that's because the women are, you know, picking the kid up from soccer practice and they right. can't. And, and yeah. the, the, the way that our society works is the man is, is, it's just how it works. He mm-hmm. can go to the, the default. office. And then on that, short I mean, not, not well, every the, couple. The will asshole make... almost came out there and be like, "Yeah, but it works." And not every, <laughs> and not every couple will make right. that decision. Okay. But that does yeah. tend to be how it goes. Now, the the free economics. Uh, podcast that you suggested we we listen to this, it's thanks to interview will with, breen actually he, okay uh, he it's an suggested. interview with claudia i think her name is claudia golden who's a professor of economics at harvard um and it, she studies the stuff pretty much exclusively okay um and what she pointed out was that it's not even necessarily that women work fewer hours um they tend to just work more flexible hours so they don't necessarily and whereas you get a lot more compensation um in your job if you work the hours your employer wants you to work like if you are there when they want you to be there irrespective of how many hours you work um that is you get better compensation which tends to be something that men have more ability to do yeah she's Um, she's the one i was quoting two months ago when we were all yelling that's that's the article <laughs> i was reading from was actually stuff from her book yelling. i don't think i was here for that yeah she's yeah so she, her her perspective 50 years according to she's the, been working on it yeah but her perspective is basically that it, most of the gender wage gap is I, she doesn't think most of it is due to the ability to negotiate because there's some implication that some women are or women aren't as good as negotiating say a higher higher salary than men yeah. she says that she, she doesn't see a lot of evidence for that but mm-hmm. she she finds a, a lot of evidence for yeah the, women needing more flexibility, flexibility in their hours even if actually they so might work sense. about as many hours yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah but the thing is that i think one pe- one thing people have to be like oh women are choosing to do this you know, somebody has to choose. Somebody has to raise the next generation, right? Like we, right. unless yeah. we don't want any more humans, unless this is our last one, last you know, and exactly. we're all going to die. We we do need another <laughs> generation of humans, and why can't we all be responsible? Why does it have to be only one gender who's responsible for making sure we have? And, and why is there one gender who takes on all this unpaid work and all this? The, the lion's share of the effort in terms of, of raising this next generation yeah. of humans, yeah. which we need. Like, it's not it's not a just a purely oh stay at home mom take your kid to the park. No, we need these humans. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's only and the lion's that. share if you're in a relationship that's right. patriarchal. Sorry, I'm saying that it's a no. I don't think that's necessarily true, but it, it's a lion's share in terms of what's average. But I like again, I think there's things that are subconscious, right? That you don't even necessarily yeah. think. Like you know, it, it, you just. 
Like, really, did you really change half the diapers? Like, was it really 50% or was it 40%? You know what I mean? Like, was it? Like, was it really? I don't know. I'd That's say just an example. On when I'm home? Kid? When I was home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kid number one, it wasn't 70? quite fair on hey, one I'm just side. saying, I, I, that was just an example, right? But I'm just, yeah. it, 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 parts of I'm, everyone's relationship. Unless really you start taking tallies. It's like, well, let's eat. Let's do check well i had 36 shitty diapers how many did you yeah no no and, and what you're saying looked. what you both just said <laughs> is exactly what i was talking about before yeah maybe it's, robots it's a lot answer. a lot yeah, a lot of the pay gap I mean, is because the okay. jetsons yeah a lot of the pay gap is because um you need and this is generalizing and i'm not talking about anybody in particular you need more time at home with you need to be able to pick the kid up from soccer or whatever what one person needs to be doing that and generally, uh, the mom does, and it always that's the way it's been. It doesn't mean it's the right way. Mm. Um, and we work 50, 60 hours a week. Traditional right, gender traditional roles. Rent, traditional gender roles. But um, what you get with a lot of working moms is the working mom works 50 hours a week, and she does 70% of the child care and tours, yeah. cooking. Like that's, and I think that's actually, like if you like there's studies that look at, what percentage that division tends to be, and I think it, it is something in that ballpark. It's it's not it's not fifty one percent. It's not, it's like <laughs> tens of percents more than fifty percent right. for women to do Th- that. Women do 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 do, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's that locked in gender roles because there's so no reason. We for started that. the show off with duty. <laughs> no, it's do do. No, it's do do. But I, that and that and that situation also changes in in step family slash blended fam- family situations where. The kids are with their mom for a certain period of time, and then they're with their father for a certain period of time. Best case scenario is they're with each parent fifty percent of the time, um, and well, for some people, best case based on parents, based on <laughs> quality of parenting. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it. But I mean, in in my situation, it's fifty fifty, and my husband does the lion's share of the driving around with the two older kids. I mean logistically speaking i have to do some of it because i work from home but it's still he does most of it he pays for all the stuff he goes and you know he he looks after that stuff so i mean it is changing and there's there's hope i guess i you know one thing i wonder though uh i'm it'd be great to see stats on this um we're not replacing our children um, yeah, like as a secular society, right. as a more secular society, I should say. Yeah, the people that are having a lot of children are, are mostly religious people. Yeah, mm. and that's right. A lot of them definitely have ingrained that gender role stuff. So, yeah. so mm-hmm. I start to wonder if there will be, with with current generations, as secular people have less and less children. It if, certainly if, seems like there's a backslide well, coming. Eh? Yeah, like but I, there I, are I less know. and less religious people too. It, are there Rel- relig- yeah religion's been on a downturn in 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 the first yeah, world there for, has been yep. an increase in no, in people who are leaving religion yeah. but i think dave's correct though in that out of the people like if you know the millennials now with most of them not going into religion i don't know that they're going to have as many kids as the people I who are religious i don't like yeah. i don't i think dave's correct yeah, yeah. but there's, there's also been an uh, an influx from that's what i mean yeah. muslim countries let's yeah. face facts and yeah. Once again, often, and they have other traditional gender roles yeah. and, yeah. and big families and big families. And big, and big, now, big families. the hope, the I hope mean, there's is there's not a lot of culture that values small families. Most cultures value big families. <laughs> yeah. right? There's not like which co- actually goes back to agricultural society. Yeah, yeah. As, when yeah. agricultural. Well, society. I mean, yeah. even even in China, where they have the one child policy, I I remember reading in anthropology and. Where the kind of it, the one child policy becomes, you must have a child policy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That wasn't and cultural. Like, the Chinese value huge families. Yeah, yeah, I know. But what I'm meaning is that even though they have the one child policy as had. the government, they don't have it anymore. They changed that. Had they modified it? Yeah. Uh, for now, my understanding, now it's the first one's free. <laughs> no, the, basically okay, you can have rabbit hole. <laughs> you can have more than one child, but you get taxed heavily. Yeah, for the it. first one's free. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. But there's a lot of there's a lot of family pressure to have at least one child, a right. male child. Yeah, specifically. Mm-hmm. You, you're, it's really frowned upon for you to get married and just go. Yeah, we're not. Want, we don't want to have children. That's just not acceptable. Yeah. So. Well, it, it still it still is very uh, frowned upon here. Like it's it's maybe a little more subtle. Yeah. But it is yeah. still 
considered really there odd for a, an adult person to decide. What am I getting grandkids? Where's my grandkids? Yeah, and you know, once I again, bring it back to the wage gap. It's like it's the societal pressures, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, That's right. You're All right. Damned if you do, and damned if you. Let's. Don't. Uh, Take the break for music. Live listeners and patrons, you can enjoy the next few minutes and then we'll be back. For regular feed subscribers, this is where where we'll end the Skeptic Studio. Make sure to check out our website, brainstormblog.net, for three months ago's show notes. (laughs) (laughs) We're up to date. (laughs) You can see our upcoming interviews and all the ways to support the show. If you have comments, criticism, or praise, then you can check out our Contact page or email us at mail at brainstormblog.net. The music break break tonight. Prayer of the Refugee by Rise Against. Change in the House of Flies by the Deftones. And Scream With Me by Mudvayne. Ooh, some country. (laughs) Not this week. (laughs) I'm going to go into our listener feedback section of the episode. All right, let's do an idea. Good for you. We have no change in our patrons this week. Uh, but I did do some work on our exclusive content for five dollar and up patrons. So if you want to support the show, then check out the website and click on one of the links and go to or go to patreon.com slash brainstorm podcast. No new iTunes reviews this week. But hopefully soon, because I downloaded iTunes and I'm gonna go review all my favorite podcasts and maybe some of them will in in return review our show. <laughs> so we got an email from William Breen. Uh, he said, I left you a review on iTunes, mostly positive, which huh? it was. It was constructive criticism. Which Thank we you, appreciate Mr. Breen. It. And I must say that since my last communique, the show is improving. I have to congratu- congratulate Lisa for successfully adding Oh My Fuck to the skeptical lexicon. I added that? <laughs> yeah. I'm so proud. Nice. <laughs> The crew is, is really getting into a good groove, so keep it up. So thanks, William. That We really appreciate that. That's even more positive uh, than the iTunes review that he gave. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> if you want to send us comments, craze, praise, or accolades, then send us an email at mail at brainstormblog.net. Appearances. Uh The episode of Utah Outcasts that I was on was out like right away. So it's been out for about a week and a half and we're still figuring out a schedule so that we can be on the secular barbershop as a crew. Sweet. Plug your stuff. Anybody got stuff? Not yet. I'm going to judge the the national science fair in a month. Is that right? That's right. I am. Nice. Is it in Toronto? It's fucking in Regina. (laughs) (laughs) It's right, people. And I'm going to, I even volunteered to be one of the French judges, so I'll judge in French. Nice. C'est vrai. We do science in Regina? We we have the National Science Fair here this year. We We actually do. Everyone should go and check it out. That means our population for a week is going to grow by 50. (laughs) Those people are going to be the 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 best smart kids, the teenagers and youth in the the country. We're coming together in May here in this lovely, wonderful city that is so much better than Toronto. (laughs) Lies. Lies. Uh, Fake fake news. I said better than Toronto. Not better than everywhere. It's going to be great. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Good for you. That that is awesome. Anybody else? Now, are I. Do they have scouts at these things, like free scouts. universities? Oh, I might. I no, might it doesn't it. work like that. <laughs> it's not like it's not like a science there's not, combine. There's you get not good grades and you go into science. science combine, so that's about that's how it goes. There's, like, no, there's no like, wow, this person's really talented. We better sign them to an early contract. No, <laughs> that Dang. might happen in like grad school, maybe. But mostly, it's just about money, right? Like you get a scholarship because of your grades, or you get mm-hmm. yeah, it's mostly, yeah. It's there I should be a science combine. <laughs> that be, that'd be cool. <laughs> well, they do exist actually for inventors. Right. That's true. That's true. Right. I have something to plug. I can, yeah. well, nothing crazy, but. Um, <laughs> nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Nothing, nothing like blowjobs. Cool. <laughs> no. Um, Dave's going to give blowjobs to everybody. <laughs> yes, yeah, so starting tonight. No, um, <laughs> no precursor, just everybody. <laughs> just everybody. <laughs> Everyone who's alive. No. Um, <laughs> 
No, anyway. <laughs> anyway. No, uh, so the Yorkland Film Festival nominations came out in between these two podcasts. Nice. And um, five of the films I worked on last year are, are Holy in Holy shit. What? And, and that's a big festival, so I'm pretty pumped. That's oh, really that's awesome. awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. So what does that mean for you if, if some of these win? Um, it, it, it adds to my resume, definitely. Like Name my, recognition. Brilliant. Yeah, like, I mean, even the fact that, like, the best of Saskatchewan category, three of the five films I did the audio for. Wow. Um, so, You're the best. So, so it's kind of like, no ma- like, I have Jeez. a three or five chance of like, <laughs> being a part right, of that. Eh? So, so does that's that mean awesome. you, could, you could get good work in Hollywood North? Well, you know what? Um, there is... A definitely a growing amount of work that I'm doing in in that area, like um, getting paid higher to do composing right. and stuff like that. Like you're trying to get more like. money out of Corey, is that what you're so, <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, that's cool. So, Whatever. Uh, and, and <laughs> May, last weekend in May is the festival. It's it's kind of the, it's the biggest one in in Saskatchewan, and it's yeah. one of the like they, there's like a stop in every province for the film circuit. Okay, and that's like the the Saskatchewan stop. So, yeah. so it'll be a lot awesome. of fun. I have a question cool. that I've been meaning to ask you for like. Six months, and I keep forgetting to. And now I'm going to ask it because I remember. On 13th Ave, that house that had the "Don't Cut the Grass." Yeah. What movie was that used in? What, what was I, that I don't for? think it was. I think that was just a joke. It's still there. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think that was just a there. joke. It's been there for several years. I like. I I just drove by there not that long ago. That was just a so joke, I... so they didn't have to cut their lawn. Oh, oh okay. I, okay. I think I think that was the whole point of that. Anyway, it was completely gated off and everything too. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so it was. Like, Don't cut the grass. Anyway, that's it. That's so. Cool. That's awesome. No, I, actually, that's really cool. Uh, we have members of our crew that are doing things. I would, I would see if I could, <laughs> really, I should see if I could try and do voice work. You should do things. You could, you could apply. Yeah, we our, should uh, all do things. Yeah. Some of Maybe us are less talented than others, but. Corey, you seem to be doing lots of things lately. Corey, do, you're doing all the things. I do things, but that's a matter of drive, not talent. And free time. <laughs> isn't, isn't that usually the way mix. it works, though? Drive. Yes. And drive oh, usually overpowers talent and then becomes success. Right. Well, we'll delayed, see. <laughs> I've been delayed in starting my new podcast, but that will be coming. So. Yeah, I, uh, I've done about a dozen interviews in the last week and a half. Wow. Oh, and something I, I want to start putting together is uh, I've been when I've been cooking my lunches for work. So I, I, I do a week's worth of cooking for work, and I, I cook like three different things, and I bring it all to work. And I'll do like a, a brandied wild mushroom pork tenderloin because that's the kind of shit I eat at work. That's fancy. Um, that's super yeah, fancy. No, it's not. Fancy. Fan- it's not fancy. It's just different <laughs> ingredients. Cooking stuff like that isn't any harder than cooking regular food. Um, but I think I'm going to do a little bit of like cooking for idiots as a, as a YouTube channel. Hmm. Like this is how fucking easy this is. And I'm going to incorporate something in that. If I can find enough, uh, enough things in the cooking world that actually show that there's a lot of woo in food. Yep. Mm. Uh, yeah. one that Jen discovered and, and she, 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 it blew her noodle was that brown sugar isn't better for you than white, white sugar. It's worse for you. Because it's white sugar coated in molasses. Right. That's it's all it is. Sugar coated in sugar. Yeah. It's just extra sugar. It's so good. I don't know that I would say it's worse it's for you, but I don't know that it's... Well, if you're using the same yeah. amount, no. But gram per gram, it's got to be the same. Right, but the flavor difference, people use more of it. Yeah, and you compress it. Like for volume-wise, I'm sure you, maybe you get yeah. more calories yeah, yeah. per cup. And, and there's probably stuff in it. molasses that's more... I don't know. Maybe it's more carcinogenic because it's yeah. like browned slightly. I don't know. That would be very, well, very, 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 very slight effects. But anyways. Yeah. Anyway. So stuff like that. Okay. We're down to five. So you're doing a cool co- cooking thing, but you're going to change the name because otherwise people won't watch it. No. Well, I don't give a <laughs> shit if people watch myself. I, I've been doing this show for over three years. People I, like this show. Like 20 <laughs> people. No, like. A couple, 300 people like this show. That's, that's, I just assumed it was you downloading it over and over <laughs> no, again. No, no, no. Like no. a loop. I, I, maybe four or five D- times. Did you know <laughs> that Sam Harris gets a million downloads every podcast? I know. A I, fucking million. Fuck Sam Harris. Yeah. A million. Sorry, I love Sam Harris. He's amazing. I'm I, just jealous. I don't love Sam Harris. I don't hate Sam Harris, but a million downloads is fucking It's insane. impressive. There's it's a lot impressive. of things about Sam Harris I don't like, but he's, for the most part, a positive influence on the community. So, yeah, I, I've been doing a ton of interviews 
for my new project. Uh, I think it's going quite well, and I hope to have a product out by the end of April. Sweet. So, in closing, we will start our outro music. Peace out, everybody. Thanks for listening. That's the end of the episode. Thanks talking by for now. listening. <laughs> Don't forget to get an audio audio books on our website brainstormblog.net. I'm very behind. I am. I will get caught up eventually. I uh, yes. no, he won't. No. Extra days. <laughs> All these extra days off. He's talking about. Uh, you can get tons of patron exclusive content by becoming a patron. We do bonus content after every, every show. After every every show, <laughs> I do personal thoughts and content. Every. In the- between every every live every episodes every single show and i've recently put together some exclusive five dollar content for patrons uh you can join our patrons will lisa rob aaron nathan daryl marissa brother brewer janet stephanie and the newly renamed positively skeptical podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash brainstorm podcast i'm still a patron yes you are still a patron didn't say my name I said positively skeptical. Oh, yeah. I forgot that that's me. <laughs> that's you. God damn it. <laughs> Make sure to join us every second week. You only got three minutes, man. Hurry when up. we broadcast live on Spreaker.com slash user slash brainstorm podcast. Our next guest is Justin Bender from the band Third Ion, and he will be joining us in studio. Sweet. So that's one less seat for a normal crew member, but I think we can make normal. that sacrifice for a guest. <laughs> you can find out more information about Third Ion at thirdion.com. I'm not invited next time. Thanks very much to Natalie and Dan from the Science Enthusiast Podcast for joining us tonight. You can find their stuff at scienceenthusiastpodcast.com. Thanks, Dave, for our intro music. Thanks to Alex Capper Murdoch for doing the voiceover for the intro and for some of our ads. And thanks to Jason Camo for our outro music. You can find his stuff at alostdatamind.com. Make sure to check out his newest albums, Some Version of the Meaning of Life. All music played is either with permission or under the SoCan license to play. For more information on SoCan, no, you can score. check out the music license info on our website, brainstormblog.net. <laughs> you can get cool brainstorm gear at <laughs> cafepress.ca slash brainstorm podcast gear. Thanks again for listening. And remember, the truth matters. You know, if this stuff was canned, you wouldn't have to uh, worry about me interrupting. just wanted to say thanks to everyone who listens to us, shares the show, gives us a rating on iTunes or Stitcher, or supports us through Patron and Gumroad. We don't have a lot of interaction sometimes with our listeners, but what we have had proves that we attract some of the best people around. Smart, kind, and cool. An audience truly worthy of the titles Hardcore and Woo Free. Thanks for helping us make the world a smarter place. This is an opinion-based podcast. Each person on the podcast is responsible for their own opinions, and those opinions don't necessarily reflect the views of the rest of the panel. Any guests or anyone associated with the people on the podcast, such as spouses, partners, children, other family members, friends, or employers. No one person speaks for the podcast, with the possible exception of Corey, and he doesn't speak for anyone else on the show. The Brainstorm podcast does not represent the views of our sponsors.